Now, L-theanine, what is it? It is, in a, it is a plant-based amino acid. So this is not like the amino acid crash courses we've been doing. This is actually a non-protein amino acid structurally related to glutamate. And we'll talk about why that's important here shortly. Um, it was identified as a constituent originally of Japanese teas in 1949. It's also found in much smaller amounts in certain types of mushrooms or fungi. But if you've ever had a cup of green tea or black tea, these are the primary sources that are known for their L-theanine content. So if you've ever had that cup of tea and thought that you felt more relaxed or you felt more mentally energized, the L-theanine in that tea combined with the caffeine is probably the reason why. Now, L-theanine is an amino acid, and so like many other amino acids, some people get it confused and think, is this essential? Do humans need theanine in order to survive? And the answer is no. To date, there's no established dietary requirement for theanine. It's not an essential or a conditionally essential amino acid. Remember, it's a plant-based amino acid. Humans don't make it. We consume it from these plants. So intake from tea, variable often tens of milligrams a day, and regular tea drinkers and supplemental intakes and trials typically range from 100 to 400 milligrams a day, depending on the goal or the trial input. So there's no formal requirement for it, but as a plant-based amino acid, it has many medicinal properties that we're going to dive into. So stay tuned for that. Now, We've got this diagram here showing you kind of the content of tea. So if you look over here on the far left of this diagram, you'll notice yellow tea is greater than green tea, which is greater in, than white tea, which is greater than oolong, which is greater than black tea. So in order from least to greatest in terms of L-theanine content. So the type of tea matters. So green teas are probably some of the most popular where you'll get the largest quantity on average Yellow tea is slightly higher than that, about five to six uh, milligrams, I believe, per, um, per dried gram weight. And then we have the other thing that influences content is the growth period. The highest content is found in the bud and the first leaf as the plant is growing. And then we also know that it's higher in spring than in summer or autumn. So L-theanine higher in uh, leaves harvested in the spring. And then we also know there are certain genotypes that produce more L-theanine. And so again, botanists have isolated and identified certain gene patterns that will yield more L-theanine from the tea itself. So for those of you who are nerdy and want to geek out on teas, um, there's a little information for you. Okay, so let's talk about some of the benefits of theanine. One of the key probably most well-studied benefits is the improvements in sleep that we see. And we'll talk more about the human studies in relation to that, to that in just a moment. We know it can improve focus, um, cognitive focus and concentration. And, and, and we'll talk about that as well and where you might want to apply that in your life. Predictable stress events, things like, oh, let's say you're going to have a difficult conversation with a family member, um, or friends, some you know, we all run into chapters in our life where we have to have those types of things. Or let's say you're going to uh, to to court. Maybe you got a traffic ticket and you're super nervous because you got to go in there, and you know that's not a fun thing to do. Or maybe you've got just something in your life that's coming up that's stressful. If you're a student, maybe that's a test. Um, but in any regard, if if you have a predictable known stress that's coming up, L-theanine is very, very helpful in those situations. And we'll talk about how and how to do it in just a moment. But then we also have the, the fact that it supports healthy inflammatory responses and, and not just inflammation, but part of inflammation is your immune system. And there's some great data on L-theanine helping uh, people's immune systems and T-cells regulate more effectively. So these are all some of the primary possible benefits that you might want to consider either getting more L-theanine in your diet through the consumption of teas or by supplementing with theanine as well. So let's show you a couple of um, research-backed 
reviews that talk about numerous quantities of benefits that, that theanine uh, actually has. And so what I, what I want to start out in saying is that this here, you can see these benefits are reported from non-clinical animal or cell studies. So these are not, so a lot of these benefits and a lot of these mechanisms of action where you'll see certain organ specific mechanisms of action are, uh, these are all reported from either animal trials or from or human cell line or cell line trials. But none, so I want you to have that background understanding because we get into the human trials, it'll, it'll, it'll make better sense for you. So as you can see here at the top, antioxidant activity. We know that theanine has antioxidant capacity and that's, uh, and that's been shown in, and again in numerous studies. So it reduces ROS, which is reactive oxygen species. It um, also has anti-inflammatory impacts, so reduces pro-inflammatory factors. There have been a number of studies that show it reduces tumor necrosis factor alpha and interleukin-6. These are pro-inflammatory chemicals. We know in, in uh, these animal trials, it reduces the inflammation in osteoarthritis, so it actually helps with arthritis inflammation. We know it reduces the inflammatory response. As a neuroprotective, we know that it improves sleep quality. So, you know, one of the things that our nerves are, are contingent on for their health is sleep. And we know that sleep enhancing benefits of theanine are there both. And this is true in humans too. And we'll talk about that. We know in animal spinal cord injury models that um, L-theanine actually prevents nerve damage, reduces the nerve damage and improves, enhances recovery. And we know that it protects the brain from a oxidative damage as well. There are animal studies that show that when you block blood flow to brains of animals, that L-theanine can actually reduce the damage that's caused by that reduction in oxygen. We know it has mental protections. Um, so in seizure disorders, again, animals, reduction in convulsions, emotional and cognitive abnormalities, there's a reduction in those. There's a, there's a reduction in stress or stress response. We know that it has anti-cancer activities. Um, including it kills cancer cells. That's what cancer cell apoptosis is. This is apoptosis is just referring to cell death. That cancer cells kill themselves as a result of exposure to L-theanine. Can, we know it reduces cancer cell growth and migration, and we know that it reverses the reactions of chemotherapy. And I'll talk about that in a moment. And there's actually some human studies on that benefit as well. So if you're going through chemotherapy and, and you're really struggling with neuropathy and other problems, we're going to talk about how you know, using L-theanine might help support you on that. We know that metabolic regulation, it reduces a number of different compounds that um, can increase or enhance metabolic syndrome. Again, these are animal study models. We know that it reduces liver damage, hepatic steatosis, so fatty, uh, or fatty deposition of the liver. And we know that it regulates intestinal microflora, which we'll talk about too. Cardiovascular protection, disruption of circadian rhythm, reduces that, reduces vascular remodeling and the formation of neointima, so has protective effects for blood vessels in the cardiovascular system. We know it protects the liver and the kidney. Um, as I mentioned before, liver cirrhosis or damage to the liver, it reduces that in uh, animal and cell line studies, and then it has uh, kidney protective effects, reducing uh, toxicity to kidneys. And then we know it has immunoprotective effects or immunoregulatory effects. It helps balance your T cells. T cells are specialized cells that uh, when they overreact, you can develop different kinds of autoimmune diseases. We know that it balances or improves intestinal mucosal immunity. So it helps the, the intestinal lining uh, directly, and there's, there's animal trials, and they, they're using this in, in many animals to protect the animals and the outcome of the, of the animal as a crop to harvest for food, and then the immune stress of innate immunity. Uh, so, and then other effects up here, increased motility of epidem epidymal sperm, so basically it, it um, improves sperm motility. We know it, um, it reduces intestinal pressure and reduces bladder hyperfunction, and uh, so a lot, of, a lot of proposed benefits based on, again, animal trials and cell mechanistic trials. What I'm going to focus on today, I wanted to give you a, a, just a general overview because one of the things about L-theanine is there's not enough research on it. Um, it's, it's a very active field of research. They're doing more research on it, but we'd love to see more human trials come out of it because there's tons of 
of animal and, um, and cell line studies that have tremendous, tremendous potential for theanine to be therapeutically used. Uh, this is another study diagram that summarizes some of the benefits. And you'll notice here that on this side, there are human clinical and epidemiological studies in people. That's why the human is here on the alleviation of immunosuppression. So in the improvement of immune cell function, we'll talk about that specifically the studies. We know that it uh, helps in the prevention of colds and flus, and it helps to promote recovery after surgery. So these are all human studies that have been shown with L-theanine. Now we know in in vitro, which are cell line studies and in animal studies, we know it has immune regulatory effects. As I was talking about a moment ago, it reduces inflammation, it alleviates nerve damage, and it regulates the intestinal immunity and tumor immunity. So it has anti-cancer promoting effects. We also know, moving over here, we know that it elevates or increases, helps to increase GSH. What is GSH? It's glutathione. What is glutathione? It is one of the most preeminent master antioxidants in the human body that helps you to detoxify. It helps protect the liver, um, and it helps the liver take out the trash of the blood, so to speak. Now, in animal uh, studies, it, there's a lot of different applications potentially that are being looked at. You can see down here, one of them is in regulation of the immune system in poultry, and I mean, as well as in livestock. What they're actually finding, there have been some interesting studies where they'll give this to animals and it increases their ability to make IgA in their intestine, which prevents against intestinal damage. And one of the, one of the dangers to, uh, to poultry or livestock, especially um, the way commercial farming is done today where you have a lot of animals enclosed or closer quarters is infection. And so one of the side effects of infection in the gut of these animals is, is the production of, so you get a bacteria infection. One of the side effects or one of the, the consequences of these bacteria is the production of endotoxins or lipopolysaccharides, um, LPS for short, and these things will cause leaky gut, so they break holes in the gut wall, and subsequently they enter into the bloodstream and traverse to the liver where they proceed to create liver damage. And one of the things that I just showed you on this animal review study of benefits showed that it reduces liver cirrhosis, but also um, has effects where it reduces fatty liver, as I underlined down here. Um, this is part of the reason why, is that it regulates the immune system or upregulates the production of antibodies. These antibodies will bind to these toxins and prevent them from doing as much damage. So when we talk about the immunomodulation, these are, these are some of the potentials for use of, of theanine in, in farming. So if you're a farmer doing it at, at home, you want to feed your animals some green tea or theanine uh, to help them, um, you know, talk with your vet first, but, you know, just trying to give you food for thought, so to speak. Okay, now back up here and more human mechanistic uh, identities. So we've, we found that, that um, theanine activates specialized types of lymphocytes promotes glutathione synthesis and antioxidant function, and it regulates the production of different cell, uh, cell byproducts called cytokines, which are important in immune function, but also in neurotransmitters. And we know one of the things that theanine does directly is it, is it binds to glutamate receptors. Now, if you know, I don't know how much you know about neurochemistry, but glutamate receptors on nerves generally are excitatory receptors. And if, if we have too much uh, glutamate reactivity, then we can get a number of different consequences that can drive up things like anxiety, perceived stress, but also too much stimulation of nerves creates toxicity of the nerve itself and can damage the nerve. And so what L-theanine has been shown to do is it binds to these L-glutamate, has a, has a mild binding effect to these glutamate receptors and it calms them down, especially if they're already amped up. And we'll talk more about how that works here in just a moment. So those are some of your main functions. Let's talk next about how 
theanine works and has been shown to work well for humans. So I'm, what I'm going to show you here, a number of different human research studies. Again, the problem with theanine is we need, we ideally we'd love way more studies. A lot of these studies are small scale studies, but the good news is many of them are double blind, randomized, placebo controlled trials. So showing really nice after effects for people. So let's start with this one. L-theanine, relieving depression, anxiety, improving sleep quality, and supporting cognitive performance under stress for students, professionals, entrepreneurs, and menopausal women. So if you're one of these, if you're a student, a professional, an entrepreneur, or menopausal women, pay attention. A woman. So evidence, and this is a review. So evidence from clinical trials suggests that theanine supplementation can improve mood stability reduce uh, physiological stress markers. And one of, the, one of those markers that we've seen it reduce is, is actually cortisol. And if you know anything about cortisol, cortisol is a catabolic steroid that uh, if you're under chronic stress, now acute stress, not the issue here, it's the chronic stress. When your cortisol is elevated for long periods of time, it acts as a catabolic hormone that reduces your muscle. So it breaks down your muscle breaks down your bone, it increases your blood sugar, and it um, ultimately, it creates something called a repair deficit. High levels of cortisol make it really, really hard over time for people to heal and repair. So they get in this state where their body is breaking down faster than it can actually repair. High levels of cortisol can also deplete certain vitamins and minerals. So you're overproducing cortisol, you're going to stress your vitamin C, your vitamin B5 levels will start to drop, your magnesium, your calcium, your zinc will start to drop, and you know, then you start to suffer the consequences of malnutrition as a result of heightened levels of, of cortisol. And what the review, uh, what the review on human trials is saying is that L-theanine reduces cortisol. It actually tames or, or brings cortisol down. So when I say ph the physiological stress markers, cortisol being one of them, also enhances attentional control. So it improves the ability to stay focused and, and keep your attention on something, particularly in students, high demand professionals, and menopausal women. So where we see you know, students having to study, professionals having to be super sharp at work, and then menopausal women, generally, especially with those, with those hormonal changes, a lot of times their cognitive function starts to decline. And so L-theanine, again, can be enhancing and effective at improving that. 